So hello everybody, my name is Michael Henry, and I am an educator, I'm not a coder, and I'm really happy to be here. I was really happy to, to be in this environment over the weekend. And I have sort of a political sort of soapbox statement to make, and this is to anyone who is an educator, to realize that programming needs educators in order to figure out how to get the, all of this work together. So I'm really happy that I had this opportunity to work together with you guys. Um, I'm part of a, a community group uh, of educators here in Kansas City, and I'm really happy that, that I was following Yvonne. It was wonderful. All the cross kind of talking that we had in many of our groups was fantastic, and I learned a great deal. I know that other people learned a great deal as well. Uh, so there's a lot of cross-pollination that's happening. A lot of what she's talking about is exactly what what we've been talking about is what on the community level. Our question is, very similar to the question here, is what does an online course look like in a gigabyte environment? What, did, what does it look like differently? Now we've seen some great examples of some of the technologies that can happen, but what, from an educator's point of view, how do we organize that? How do we, how do we share that? How do we connect? learners and students. So uh, what that is, <laughs> I would say, you know, maybe I can just talk. Uh, <laughs> so what that is, is basically figuring out what a community uh, open online course, a massively open online course, a MOOC, what a lot of people talk about MOOCs, looks like when it's built for a community. So we've been talking with several different university and uh, educational institutions in Kansas City trying to figure out a way to make a community-wide course on several subjects that can demonstrate what it means to have a gigabyte uh, environment for learning. And so that was our that was our uh, goal this weekend was to find a way to uh, make an open environment. Uh, all I need is There it is. Okay, and actually, you know what? Why don't you talk just a little bit? Uh, one of the things that we've been talking about, Yvonne is, it's really great that Yvonne is here, that I'm here, and uh, James is here as well. And basically, we're all talking sort of about the same thing, and that's how, how, do, we, how do we find, find mentors? How do we find resources to learn, how do we organize all of these things, and a, and, a, and a learning environment based on social learning technology, game game theory, etc., cetera, is, is the way to do that. James, why don't you go ahead. Hi, my name is James Hines. I am a new media producer. I've been involved in the EdTech movement for a couple of years. And primarily, I'm going to just echo some things that Mike is going to talk about in my presentation is right after in that when we both presented ideas, we, we were like bookends to the notion of how to use a heavy video uh, environment to engage mentorship and video-driven programming. I'm approaching it from a parent's point of view who makes that decision. Michael is approaching it from a student who is making that decision. Um, Yvonne, of course, looks at how a company makes that decision of using rich media, which is probably the easiest thing to really take advantage of in a very era. Okay. Very fast, broad environment. Here you go. Okay, great. So basically, our challenge was to figure out how to create an uh, open learning environment uh, that has uh, some social media connected to it. And basically, we started with uh, Google Course Builder. Uh, what we looked at and what we created was uh, some tracking mechanisms that were not involved in the uh, Google Course Builder. Uh, basically, to uh, the idea is essentially to those of you who are familiar with Tin Can, it's basically an open source learning stream. So you can pull uh, resources from uh, Mozilla badges, for example, and pull them into the learning environment. Um, in this particular case, um, we also uh, have want to figure out a way to connect mentors, which also James, uh, I think, just uh, talked about. And we would use a, a group of <coughs> metrics such as uh, Mozilla Badges and also Team Can, the, the experience API, 
to sort of show uh, levels of, of competence and then students can match up with, with mentors. Somebody called this sort of the match game for educators and learners. Uh, James, do you want to? Say something? Um, no, really. At this point, um, one of the things that's different about Mike's presentation, which um, between lines will come up, so Mike is very much into the gaming gamification. The kids are who would probably be in the college age, or maybe just a little or less, are very much into the whole badge movement, the whole notion that uh, watching, being able to contribute to the pathway by giving. Uh, comments which over time add up to a certain amount of usage which equal what a badge is about and there'll be no more of this the teacher was high. I mean, how do you rate use that to rate that that's a good way to teach? Okay, great. That's it. Thank you very much.